Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, baseball fans of all ages, hello and welcome to beautiful Campanelli Stadium on an absolutely wonderful Monday afternoon for some MIAA high school baseball. It is a Southeast Conference clash, the Bridgewater Random Trojans and the Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, pleased to be joined alongside today by big game Miles Jackson. Miles, the Boxers are 2-0. and They've competed in two one-run different games. Those are games that the coach said they would have lost last year, and those are some of the changes that they've worked on to really put together a strong start to the 2023 campaign. Yeah, you're exactly right, Matt. I think one of the, the key things, positive things for Brockton's here, they got a little bit better pitching than they had last year. So pitching makes a big difference, especially in, in high school baseball. Um, and, and your bullpen. What do you have when you have to bring your pitcher out, your starting pitcher out? What do you have in the bullpen? So obviously Brockton's come out with a great start, 2-0, and and we just look forward to a great ball game. Those two decisions coming over North Quincy and the Whitman Hanson Panthers. Chris Frost on the hill today for the boxers. Doing the catching for him is Armani LaRusso. Brady Witz at first base, second base patrolled by Nick Genitasio. The shortstop is Adam Perez. At the hot corner is Dom Hopkins. Left to right across the outfield, Cody Buecher, Jackson O'Brien, and Brett Keane. Kevin Doyle, the leadoff man for the Trojans. That one off of the leg pad of LaRusso to the backstop. But just a beautiful day out here, Matt, for some baseball today. 65 degrees. Nice little sea breeze coming in. That's going to be ball four to lead off walk for Doyle. The rest of the Trojans lineup, Casey Wensley will bat now. Cam Morrison hits third. Owen King batting cleanup today for Bridgewater Raynham. Tyler Katogio is batting fifth. Luke Barry sixth. Bobby Quill hitting seventh. Evan Samsil is batting eighth. And Quinlan Keith is batting ninth. Left-handed Frost now working from the set. Tosses in strike one to Wensley. Yeah, nice job there. He painted a corner with that um, pitch right there. Yeah, one from Chris Frost. Just missed the corner that time. It's like he tried to throw a curveball right there. Like you said, missed the outside corner of the plate. Frost, the senior at Brockton High. Runner takes off. The throw down is going to be held by the catcher, Russo, And it's a stolen base for Kevin Doyle. Yeah, nice job by Doyle. He read the pitcher well. You can see the pitcher has a kind of a slow windup, so the um, base runner got a good jump on the steal there. Decent lead off of second again. Large secondary lead ball two now to Wensley. Being held close by Perez at second. Now ground ball right side, that'll get through. And waved around, the throw home, cut off, and diving in safely is Doyle. Good block there by LaRusso to prevent an advancement by Wensley, but BR scores first blood here today. It is an RBI single for Casey Wensley. Yeah, nice job by Wensley. He put the ball exactly where he should have, right between the first baseman and the second baseman, right in that gap. And um, the man scored from second base. Uh, Doyle, so uh, nice job by the hitting hitter there. Now familiar main name for Trojan fans, Cam Morrison. The Bridgewater Random catcher will step in. Morrison holds a lot of power. Chris Frost already 14 pitches into the afternoon. Of course, we know that MIAA pitch limit 115 on the day. He'll throw over to first. Diving back safely now, Wensley. First 
first offering and Russo faking down to first again. Morrison might have gotten in the way of a potential throw. Yeah, that was real inside. Morrison had to lift his leg up a little bit to avoid being hit by the pitch. The ball, no strikes to Kim Morrison. Follows this one off to even the count at a ball and a strike. Already we're gonna see some boxers headed down to the bullpen. Gonna throw to first, that one a little bit closer, but diving back once again was Casey Wensley. Owen King awaiting on deck. Now let's hear top of the first inning. Slow chopper to first. The flip to Frost, closer than it should have been, but he beats it by a half step. That advances the runner on the sacrifice grounder and gives the boxers the first out of the top of the first. Yeah, that was good hustling by Morrison. Almost uh, was safe on the play, but. A little bit of indecision by the first baseman yeah, there too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's Brady Witt. Now runner on second for the cleanup hitter, Owen King. One away here as King looks at strike one, a high throw from LaRusso back to Frost almost wound up in the outfield. Yo, one from Frost is fouled off. Now up 0 and 2 is Frost. Miss the inside corner. Ball on two strikes. Beautiful afternoon here, Miles, at Campanelli Stadium. You can really see some of the work that the new owners of the Brockton Rocks have put into the stadium. The stadium looks very good early on here. That nasty lip on the edge of the infield is gone. High pop up, shallow right. Second baseman calls it off and makes the catch for out number two. That is Nick Genitasio yeah. on the put out. Good communication by the second baseman there to um, wave off the uh, right fielder. He came in pretty deep, but he heard the call. That will bring up the first baseman, Tyler Katogio. Runner on second, one run already across here, top of the first inning for Bridgewater Raynham. Ball just missed low. The offering from Chris Frost is upstairs and inside two and oh. Wensley takes his lead off of second base. High pop up, deep shortstop. And the catch is made. That will retire the side, Adam Perez, on the inning ending catch. One run across for the Trojans in the top of the first inning on just one hit. When we come back, we'll meet the Brockton Boxers starting lineup and the Trojans defensive look.
Yeah, Matt. So um, Chris Frost, a little bit shaky at the beginning. Had to find his um, area around the plate, but he settled down. But Recovered well after those first two Trojan hitters. Exactly. I got a little nervous Came back there. to get the next three. Yep, but he settled down, and uh, now Brockton has a chance to uh, do something with their bats. Let's meet the boxers starting lineup. Jackson O'Brien will get us started. Armani LaRusso is batting second. Nick Genitasio hits third. My man Zeke is batting cleanup. Brady Witt batting fifth. Dom Hopkins is sixth. Adam Perez batting seventh. Cody Buecher batting eighth. Brett Keen will bat ninth. Zeke in Shostegi. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Trojans' defensive look on the hill is Jack Ritchie doing the catching for him, Kim Morrison. Tyler Cotogio is at first base. Quinlan Keefe at second. The shortstop is Luke Barry. The hot corner being patrolled today by Casey Wensley. Bobby Quill in left field, Kevin Doyle in center, Evan Samsel in right. Here is the center fielder for Brockton, Jackson O'Brien. First offering of the day for Jack Ritchie. He's fouled off, that'll get out of play down the right field line. That just touched the inside corner now, 0-2 for O'Brien. Two, that'll be outside for ball one. Oh. O'Brien down by way of the K, a nasty bender coming in over the plate. Yeah, that was nasty because it was right over the plate. Obviously, O'Brien couldn't see something there and just, it froze him. Four pitch strikeout for Jack Ritchie. Romani LaRusso wearing number one for Brockton. High fly ball, left center field, drifting over and not gonna get there, falls right between the two Trojans. Bobby Quill picking it up on the bounce, but it's a one-out double for Armani LaRusso. Yeah, and the reason he got that double, that was a long high fly in the gap. That was the key, it was in the gap between the left, left fielder and the right uh, center fielder, and they just couldn't get to it in time. He hit it pretty good. You see it right there. Taking another look, perfect placement, exactly halfway between left and center field. Fouled off onto the concourse here at Campanelli Stadium. Stadium, of course, hosts the Brockton Rocks in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League, the FCBL. They'll be playing against the Savannah Bananas this summer. The Savannah Bananas. The Savannah Bananas, the hottest thing in baseball. The 1-1 one, one fouled off our play again. Russo on second. This is Nick Genitasio at the plate. 1-2. Catcher lost it. Russo held it second. Timeout. 
asked for and granted. Now the 2-2. Shot out to center. First step back, but coming in to make the catch is Kevin Doyle and the Russo forced to hold it second. Now two away here in the bottom of the first inning. Richie 12 pitches into his afternoon. He'll now face the boxer cleanup hitter. Zeke and Chostegi. Ball and a strike. Chosky pops it a mile in the air. First base side and foul territory. Losing it in the sun. Nice recovery from his knee. Went Tyler Catogio and that will retire the side. Great play for the Trojan first baseman to end the first inning mile. Yeah, nice play by the end. You'll see it right here on the replay. Like you said, very high pop fly. The sun is in the player's eyes. He's fighting it, and fighting it, and finally makes an excellent grab there. Not a cloud in the sky at Campanelli. The Trojans have the lead at the end of the first inning. One nothing, one run on one hit for BR. No runs on one hit for Brockton. Top of the second coming at you right after this on Bridgewater Television and Brockton Community Access. Top of the second inning will be let off for Bridgewater Raynham by number eight, Luke Barry. He's the shortstop. Bobby Quill and Evan Samsel also do up for the Trojans Miles. Yeah, we can see what um, our picture, Chris, excuse me, our pitcher, Chris Frost, see if he can uh, get these guys out of here early. Good recovery for him in the first inning. He gives up a leadoff single here into right field. Scored the only Trojan run of the afternoon. Knocked in from Wensley and then Frost battled back to get Morrison King and Katogio to retire the side. Chopper to first, throw to second is gonna be too late. Oh no, he said they got him. Just got him. That'll be the first out of the inning. Let's see, see. it again. Oh, he slowed up just a tad bit for, for the ball to the get there. The boxer was off of the bag. You saw that he was off the bag? His foot slid off the bag. 
No replay review in high school baseball. So the boxers get the lead runner for the first out of the inning. Quinn takes first base. Evan Samson now the right fielder. Mark takes off again, throw down is gonna be offline. A stolen base for Bobby Quill. Great jump on the ball. And Russo would have had to make the absolute perfect throw and then even still probably would have gotten beat to second base. Our grounder gets past the diving shortstop. That will score another Trojan run. The throw home is going to be airmailed right there for backup. Was the pitcher Frost and advancing on the throw home is Samson for the RBI single technically. Yeah, I think the left fielder for Brockton made an error there. The, the runner was gonna score no matter what. He should have threw it to second to keep the, the lead runner on first base. So it's 2-0, Bridgewater ran him on top. Frost now 28 pitches in. Good block that time by LaRusso. One oh off the handle of the bat, right to the shortstop Perez, long throw to first. In time for the out, moves the runner over for the sacrifice six to three ground ball. Nice decision there by the set, uh, shortstop to make the sure out at first base. Gives the boxers the second out of the top of the second inning. That brings back up the leadoff man, Kevin Doyle, scored the first Trojan run of the day. Yeah, he got on with the walk and, like you said, ended up scoring a run, the only run. Frost now working for the windup ground ball right up the middle. That'll score the third BR run as easily getting in from third goes Evan Samsel. And Doyle placed that in the perfect spot right down the middle so his teammate can score. Casey Wensley has an RBI single. Boxer's gonna go almost pitch out here. Russo. Half crouched down, anticipating Doyle taking off the speedy center fielder. Ball one up and out of the zone. Now Doyle indeed takes off. Throw down is on the money. The throw gets him at second base, and that'll retire the side. Doyle thrown out at second from Armani LaRusso Miles. That was a nice, strong throw by LaRusso, right where it had to be low for the uh, shortstop to get it in. Boxers knew he was going to take off. Boxers knew he was going to take off. You see it right there. Oh, that's the single. And luckily the uh, pitcher was backing up the, and here it is right. The two Trojan RBI singles. So we're at 3-0 at the end, uh, the middle of the second inning. The Boxers will send up their five, six, seven hitters when we come back.
Brady Witt leads off the bottom of the second inning. Tom Hopkins, Adam Perez also do up for the Brockton Boxers. And it's a first pitch strike from Jack Ritchie. Just the one hit in the first frame. Missing outside that time, one and one. To the first baseman, Witt. Spinning out, missing inside, ball two. Two balls, two strikes to Witt, that one catching the outer part of the plate. The offering from Richie. Gets him over the inside, outside corner, and Witt doesn't believe it. He has a little bit low, but he should have swung at it. But great pitch by um, Bridgewater's pitcher there, uh, Richie. He put it where he had to put it. Dom Hopkins now with one out in the bottom of the second inning. Looks at ball one up around his eye level. Strike one of the fastball. Yeah, nice strong fastball right there by Richie. Hard slider looked like that time. Bobbled by the second baseman, and that will be an E4 as Dom Hopkins reaches on the infield grounder. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there with the second baseman. I don't know if it was the sun or he just misplays the hop, misplayed the hop. Brings up Adam Perez, the shortstop. This looks a ball one up and out. Bouncing off out of play, ball and a strike. Hopkins holding it at first. Cody Buker waiting on deck, the left fielder for Brockton. Ooh, nasty curve. Good yes. mix of pitches so far from yeah. Jack Ritchie. Jack Ritchie's doing a great job on the mound so far. Brockton hasn't been able to figure him out yet. Hopkins holds, and this one laced into left field, straight down the line. Hopkins gonna turn for third. The throw in is going to get through. And Perez standing on second base. Yeah, you're right, he ripped that. You'll see it right here. Bang! I mean, like you say, he laced it out there to left center. I mean, excuse me, left field there by the uh, foul line. That was a good throw. That was close. Yeah, that was a good throw in. If that throw could have been a little bit more inside, the uh, third baseman would have had a better chance of tagging him out. Trojans have a meeting of the minds at the pitcher's mound. Runners on second and third here with one out. Bottom of the second inning, the boxers in good position to strike here with their number eight hitter, Cody Buker up at the dish. Beaver swinging a miss, strike one. Buker sends it out to right field, drifting over, getting ready to tag is Hopkins. He'll take off, the throw in is gonna be cut off. The runners advance, it's a sacrifice fly for Cody Buker to give the boxers their first run of the afternoon. Yeah, that's a good first run for the boxers, give them a little momentum to keep going here. Now they're only down by two runs. Um, they just gotta keep it going if possible. So now Brett Keen, the right fielder, steps in, runner on third, two away in the bottom of the second inning. Richie up to 30 pitches on the outing so far, ball one. 
outside. Buker chopper to third, high hop handled. The throw is going to be in time to retire the side. But the boxers get their first run of the afternoon, Miles, to cut the lead to 3-1, heading to the top of the third inning. Yeah, they kind of got their bats going and um, got one run out of it. I tell you, that was a good hustle by uh, Keen there. That throw had to be right on there because he was only beaten by about a half step or so. There's your line, three runs, five hits, one error for the Trojans, one run on two hits for the Boxers. Top of the third inning coming at you when we come back. Top of the third inning, led off by the man who was in the box to end the top of the second inning, Casey Wensley, after Kevin Doyle got thrown out, stealing second base. Wensley, an RBI single his first time up. Fouls it off one and one to the Trojan third baseman. Mad Dog Matt Nelson, big game, Miles Jackson, bringing you the action on Procton Community Access and Bridgewater Television. It's joint productions, always a boatload of fun. Always. High pop up. Shortstop calls him off. Perez sizing it up, makes the catch, and there's one away. Cam Morrison retired his first time up. In the three slot for the Trojans today. It's a rope out to left that will one hop. And be a first pitch single. Bucar out there and left. Took a weird bounce off of Patrick Grass out there. Almost got him going the other way. Sure did. But nice recovery by the left fielder out there for Brockton. It's Morrison on first for the cleanup hitter King. Owen King looking at strike one. Slicer foul. Delayed motion to the plate. You almost thought Frost might go towards first base with that throw. You know, Matt, I don't know if I've been out of touch, but I haven't seen too many orange bats in uh, high school, college. It, it varies. Bats. It varies. So mm -hmm. The bright colors, it, it's like basketball players with the shoes. Some of them... Like the, the bright colored bats, yep, the bright yep. colored Colors, uh, sneakers, cleats. Yep, the sneakers. cleats. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Owen oh, two, the count to Owen King after he followed that one off into the stands. Hey, 
Turner holds, this one shot out to the right center field gap. It's gonna be trouble. It's gonna get all the way to the warning track before being picked up by the center fielder. The runner, Wensley, gets all the way around from first and it's an RBI double for Owen King. Yeah, that was a beautiful hit right in the gap. Just made it out there to the warning track, as you said, and he comes up with a nice double and, and brings in another run. Deep part of the ballpark. 403 to dead center. That allowed Kim Morrison easily to score from first base. 4-1 Trojans. Frost now 45 pitches in. Hard grounder, that'll go foul down the left field line. Some stirring in the Trojan bullpen now. Looks to be number seven, Brendan Goonan warming up. Wow, that pitch looked like it fooled Tile a little bit. Swung helplessly. Tyler Catogio, the batter. One and two count. Fouls it off. Both teams have pitchers warming up. Pitch limit 115 before they have to be taken out of the game. Hard ground ball, it takes a weird hop into left field and now Owen King going to score easily from second. And into second base. Is Katogio. Would you call that a double or a single? Single and error? Single and an error. He kicked it. 5 1 the Trojans lead to up of the third inning. Runner still on second base as King and Katogio switch places. That brings up Luke Barry. Well, Bridgewater's Rams bats have come alive again. They were alive and hot in that first inning, and now we're in the bot uh, top of the third, and they've come come alive again. Ebbs and flows. Yes, indeed. Still just one out here in the top of the third frame. Ball two comes in outside. Two one from Frost. Oh, good, for pitch. Two. good pitch right there. Lower part of the zone over the outside corner. Two and two now for Chris Frost. Outside full count. Yeah, Frost has to get this one over the plate. He misses, it's five, a uh, six pitch walk for Luke Barry and that sends up Bobby Quill and LaRusso will head back out to the pitcher's mound to have a word with Frost. Runners on first and second, one out. Top of the third inning, Trojans already leading five to one. Yeah, good idea by LaRusso, the catcher. 
to go out there and um, calm down his uh, pitcher. As he's gotten a little erratic. A lot of pitchers thrown outside. And again, he cannot afford to just walk these guys because they got some hat, hot bats right now. So he's going to have to put it over the plate or close to it. Bobby Quill, the Trojan batter, looks at ball one up and out of the zone. from Frost, Perez at second, holding Patogio close. That one good for strike one from Frost, one and one. Hard grounder, handled by Witt, he'll take it himself. Two outs, but the runners move up. on second and third with two outs for Evan Samso. Yeah, big RBI hit his first time up. Grounder to third base. The long throw to first is offline, but coming down with the tag is Witt, and that will retire the side. An acrobatic end to the top of the third inning, Miles. The Trojans will be two stranded. Yeah, exactly right. You'll see it right here. Nice job by the first baseman to jump up. That was a high throw. Look at that. And had sense enough to tag him out just before he touched the base. Saves the run and sends us to the middle of the third inning. Five to one, the Bridgewater Trojans leading the Brockton Boxers. You're watching MIAA Baseball on BCA and BTV. Jackson O'Brien leads off the bottom of the third. As the boxers finally get around the order. Jackson 0 for 1. Puts ball 2 inside there, 2-0. Just catching the inside. Robert that time yeah, for strike one. He painted that one nice to corner. Inside corner. Two and one from Richie, sliced out to right. That will go foul. It would have been nice to see that straighten out a little bit. For, uh, would have wound up rattling around the corner by the foul pull out and right. Yeah. 
O'Brien, he's got some speed, so I'm sure that would have been a double. Brian, the center fielder. Ball three inside, full count. Payoff pitch is low, low. ball four, so it's a leadoff walk for Jackson O'Brien. Armani LaRusso. Double to the gap, his first time up. Our grounder is short, backhand stab to second for one long throw to first is offline. Gets all the way to the fence. And into second base is LaRusso. Nice hustle by LaRusso. Lowe's keeping score at home. That's six to four on the putout, and then a throwing error to first, allowing for the advancement of LaRusso to second base. Now we'll bring up Nick Genitasio. Quirky scoring rules of baseball, as there is in really every sport. Recently saw a runner get hit by a live ball. Wow. A ground ball between first and second. The runner going from first to second got hit by the ball. So in high school, is the runner out? The runner is out. And in the book, it goes down as a fielder's choice. Whichever player was close, there is a rope out to center right at Kevin Doyle for the second out of the inning. So it's a fielder's choice in the book. Whichever defensive player was closest to the ball when the runner got hit is credited with the putout throwing to wherever, whichever base that runner was running to. So in this case, it was a four to six fielder's choice and a runner reached first base because of it. Inside, backing out is Enchostega. Zeke, the designated hitter for the boxers today. Zeke look like, looks like he might have some power if he connects well. Chopper, nice, play. nice throw to first. A great stab at shortstop by Luke Barry. That will retire the boxers in the bottom of the third inning. Just the one hit to speak of. Still 5-1 Trojans heading to the top of the fourth.
Chris Frost will return to the hill for the boxers to start his fourth inning of work. Top of the fourth inning, the Trojans have a five to one lead. Nice bender from Frost in for strike one. This is Quinlan Keith, the second baseman at the dish for Bridgewater Random. Right up the middle, Frost waves his glove at the headhunter, but luckily gets out of the way. Lead off single for Keith. The bottom of the Trojans order mile has been productive today. Very productive. You want to see the bottom of the order start off with a single because you know what comes after the bottom of the order, top of the order. That will bring out Coach Brennan for a meeting at the mound, and that will be the day for Chris Frost and the designated heater, Zeke Inchostegui, will come out to the hill to take his place. Pitching change from Campanelli Stadium with the Trojans, runner on first, no outs in the top of the fourth inning, leading five to one. We'll take the break too and have the rest of the fourth when we come back. Chossie, ground ball through the right side into right field, bobbled. Runners will hold. First two runners on here, top of the fourth inning. Sends up Casey Wensley, part of the Trojan order coming up. Well, this Bridgewater team, they've got some good hitters. So far, I can tell they got some very good, good placement type hitters. We're expecting a bunt at first. He'll see it. Missing on the attempt, but the runners will advance on the dropped Pitch by LaRusso. Good heads up play there by the base runner there at second base. Ball on 
a strike now to Wensley. Infield in with the runner on third. Chastigy's offering, good for strike two. Two and two now to Wensley. Called off to the backstop. Remains two and two. You can see the infields in just right at the grass. Hard grounder foul. Decent hands by the first base coach. That's number four, Connor Nichols for the Trojans. Two two from in Shostagy. Curveball. And it got Wensley ahead of him. Wensley doing a great job hanging in there at the plate. Fouling off a number of uh, pitches. Making Brockton's pitcher work. Another two two. Ooh. Another curveball, another foul. Had him fooled there, but he did catch a piece of that ball. The third 2-2 two -two from Zeke and Chostigy. Another hard grounder foul. Do it again for the fourth time with two and two. Tough batter. Chostigy 11 pitches in. More than half have come this at bat. Who's going to win the battle? Do it one more time. The fifth two ball, two strike pitch. Foul territory, left field side. It's gonna fall in. Roll right into the um, into the tarp cylinder the down tarp there. Tarp cylinder, yes. We'll see a sixth two ball, two strike pitch from Inchostigi to Wensley. Battle of the pitcher and the catcher. I mean, excuse me, battle of the pitcher and the batter. Chostigi working from the windup. Lucky number seven. He's a battler. Got a good eye when he swings that bat. Keeps his eye on a ball. Makes contact. Number eight. Ball three. Full count. That ball's anywhere around the plate. I believe he's swinging. The payoff pitch, ground ball, first oh. base. Through the glove of Witt into right field. Both runners will head home, scoring for second. Goes number 17, Kevin Doyle, and it's seven to one BR. Yeah, tough break there by the first baseman, Witt. Thought he should have had it. It was a tough play, but she came up with it. All-time battle with Chostigy and Wensley all over the Amica pitch zone. Now Zeke will step off and chase Wensley back to first. Oh. 
Wensley takes off, throw down offline, stolen base for Casey Wensley. Casey paying attention out there. Nice steal. Side corner for strike one. Kim Morrison back for another at bat. Check swing. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, he was tempted to swing there, but he the last second realized how far outside it was. <laughs> Big swing and a miss from Morrison, one up in the zone. Yeah, a little bit of high heat right there by Brockton's pitcher, Zeke. Two balls, two strikes to Morrison, also a member of the Trojan football team. to the backstop. Two from in Shostagi. Upstairs ball three. These two teams, of course, participants for the Cape Cod Cafe Bowl every Thanksgiving. Always an exciting game on Thanksgiving between these two teams. Brockton starting to tip the scales back even a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. Still some work to do, but they'll square off at Bridgewater Raynham this coming Turkey Day. I know when um, Bridgewater and Brockton started this rivalry on Turkey Day, Bridgewater had the upper hand there for Dolphin, a little bit. It was like four or five <laughs> straight to start. <laughs> We're thinking about changing the Thanksgiving opponent. <laughs> Bridgewater has some great, Bridgewater Rain has some great um, athletes coming out of there. Football, basketball, baseball. What are they feeding them over there? It's gotta be something in the that regional water, water supply. Yes, yes. Upstairs, ball four. It'll be a walk to Morrison. Of course, this will be the first Thanksgiving that Brockton does not have Coach Peter Colombo at the helm. It's going to seem awfully different. I mean, when I got to Brock and I, it was a Colombo coaching then, Armin. And uh, after he coached for so many years, then Peter took over, and all we've known is the Colombos. Colombos versus Dan Buron for the Trojans. Classic. He's retired now as well. Isn't he a referee now? I think he might be. Yeah. I think I heard that White somewhere. Hair, yeah, he was, yeah, he repped the Brock and High game one time this year. Pretty good ref, too. Some memorable battles with referees over the years. <laughs> you wonder why he would wish that upon himself. Just, I guess he just loves loves sports. I mean, he got out of coaching, now he's refereeing. refereeing. Chopper to third. Getting the lead runner of the boxers, no throw over to first. Great break right there for the boxers. Cut down that lead runner at third to third. One would think the, the trend of the industry, right? All these former coaches joining the media, this analysts 
I heard that Jeff Fowler and VTV were in negotiations with now former coach Biron for an analyst seat at Bridgewater Random Games. Wow. You've been a great Shows analyst. Chose to become a ref instead. You want to be right there in the action. Got to stay on the field. Got to stay on the field. Runners on first and second here, one away. Top of the fourth inning, strike one. Tossed in to Tyler Katogio. She only one out still. All right, Slicer foul. Ball on two strikes now to the BR first baseman. And that's not fog you see on your screen, that's dust. A lot of dust getting kicked up here. We got a dust bowl going on here at Campanelli Stadium. She would have thought as much as it's rained over the last month or two that the field would still be a little bit wet and dense. Damp, yeah, yeah. Not as much dust, but beautiful out yesterday, beautiful out today. Togio skies it to right field. Lifting back and over, making the grab. The runners will try to tag. Stuck at first base is King, or rather Morrison. And fencing to third is Wensley. Connor Nichols, pinch runner on third base. Brings up Luke Barry. Getting to that six, seven, eight, nine part of the order, Miles, that has been very, very productive today. Runner takes off for second, skied straight up and back towards us. It'll fall 10 feet in front of our window. Nothing that makes a coach feel better than to have his bottom lineup really produce. The guys that you're not thinking you're gonna end up counting on. They've put up a majority of the runs today. Done a great job. Took advantage. Chostigi steps off, looks back towards first, knowing that Katogio might try to take off here. Here he goes. Throw down to third on the faker. It bounces in and he didn't catch it, but he did a nice job using his body to and block Tom that. Tom Hopkins got that off of the outside of his thigh. Yeah, you know that stung a little bit, but uh, he kept the ball from going out there to the right field. Seen a couple interesting fakes for the double steal situation. So far the season, here's a shot out to left field, diving and missing it, and getting all the way back, that getting past Cody Buecher. Chases down long, bomb into third, and did he get him? He did wow. on the second attempt, diving back to the bag was number 10, Dom Hopkins. And that will retire the side. BR did get a couple runs off that as trying to get all the way to third was Luke Barry recovering. In left was Buker Miles, a wild sequence. We'll take another look. This thing just kind of, this, this son and everything, not to make excuses, but if he would have came in a little bit more to his right, he would have had it. But it is tough trying to deal with that son. And you can see Mr. Tag there, but he got him right there. And Off you can the see bag. The, it's tough to see where the bag is with all the dust. Umpire was right there. Yeah, he was the right there. Dust is rolling the opposite direction, yeah, so exactly. he called it as he saw it. That retires the side, but BR scores another couple more. Before that out was recorded, it's nine to one, heading to the bottom of the fourth inning.
chopper on the first pitch of the inning. Picked up long throw and in time. Boy, that was a nice play by the third baseman. You can see tough grounder, but he picked it up. We'll see it right here on the replay. How he double shifts there, make sure he air and guns it. Strong arm there by the third baseman there, number one. Nice pick first by Katojio as well. Yes, yes. Nice job by the first baseman. One pitch, one out. The definition of efficiency to start the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's a pop out to left center field, drifting over and making the catch Kevin Doyle. Two pitches, two outs. That hasn't happened much today for the Brockton boxes. Two pitches, two outs. That will bring up Adam Perez, the last hit out to center was Dom Hopkins. First pitch to Perez, he holds up and it will not be a three pitch inning for Jack Ritchie. Thank God. High pop up, straight up, shallow third base. And missing it, it falls in fair territory. So Perez is gonna reach First base. First on what would have been a foul ball had it fallen in foul territory, but it kicked the heel of the glove. You'll see it right here, Matt. Of Wensley. Doink and fell in fair territory. You think the uh, wind got a little bit of that? Cause that was a high pop up. Wind might have had a little bit a little to bit. do with that. Yeah. It did spend a lot of time up in midair. Up in the stratosphere. Gives the boxers a base runner with two away. Now is that a single or would you call that a single? That's an error. Error, okay. That's what I thought. So Perez on first. Throw down. Tojio had to go off of his upper leg. Gee, that was a nice throw. That was a bullet down there. Perez holds. This one chopped foul to the Trojan dugout. Bottom of the fourth boxes need a big inning. Maybe try to get three or four runs in. Getting dangerously close to flirting with that mercy rule down 10 after four and a half innings. Ooh, off his foot a little bit. Tony Palladino warming up in the Trojan bullpen out there in left field. Two balls, two strikes. Now to the boxer at the plate, Cody Buchert. Perez takes off, it's a foul ball off of off his foot again. Buchert's Left toe. You know that ouch. High steps it off. Hmm. Yeah, right off that left foot. <laughs> nice job by the replay. Perez 
Davis takes off again. Strike three. Wow. Right down Broadway gets Buker, and that will end the inning. The boxers strand their only base runner. I'll tell you, Richie is on point with Bridgewater Ram. He's just throwing a number of pitches, and Brockton just can't figure it out. Just froze the batter right there. That was right over the plate, but froze him. Well, there was a chance that that was the last inning of work that Jack Ritchie will see today with Palladino warming in the Trojan pen. That would be a little bit of music to the boxers' ears after not being able to get to the Bridgewater Random Trojan star. It's 9-1. to one. We're headed to the top of the fifth inning when we come back. Chostegui back on the hill for the boxers for the top of the fifth. Brockton needing to prevent any runs from getting across here. That will be tough to do as launching one into the deep left center field gap is Bobby Quill, the seven hitter striking again. He's headed for third with a leadoff triple for Bridgewater Raynham. That was beautifully, beautifully placed by the uh, batter as he put it right in the gap. The Bridgewater hitters are some good hitters. As Brockton is finding out. I'm gonna bring up Samsel, who has had himself a nice afternoon at the plate. And the ball getting past LaRusso, the throw home. Not in time. There's the tenth Trojan run of the day. Lead off triple for Bobby Quill. And he makes the boxers pay on the very next pitch. Tough break there for the boxers. They cannot contain this hot hitting Bridgewater Ringham team. High pop up, first base. Witt calls it off, makes the catch. In foul territory for out number one. That will bring up Quinlan Keefe. Keefe nine hitters reach base. Couple times today. Big swing and a miss there. Chopper foul territory. Really good stop over there by Connor Nichols. Yeah, he's had a lot of action over there at first base, coach position. It's going to miss strike three. LaRusso is going to have to toss down to Witt. Almost missed him. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. That's just the way it's been going for Brockton today. 
Luckily, the first baseman was able to stretch out there and get that errant throw. Yeah, at the replay. Yeah. Always the top of the line production. These joint operations between Brockton Community Access Bridgewater Television. Well, that's what you get when you got two top TV stations teaming up to give us this um, colorful baseball game today. That'll be it for Zeke and Shostagy, who looks like he's going to move over to first base. So we'll get the defensive alignment when we come back, but another quick shout out to the production crew here. Top of the line. Four cameras. We're having fun. Mike the Postman Simmons up here in the press box. Always having fun here on a Monday afternoon. Always. Rest of the top of the fifth inning when we come back. Pitching change here at Campanelli. Ball one tossed in by the new Brockton pitcher, Bobby Witt. Him and Nanchostegi switching places, first base and the hill. Oh my God. And a single for number 17, that's Kevin Doyle on base again in the leadoff spot. Yeah, some good hitting by Doyle. Doyle had three singles today in a walk. That's why he's the leadoff hitter. You can see that shadow crossing home plate right now. Starting to sit right behind us. Yep. Here at Campanelli Stadium. Foul down the right field line. Wensley's had a good productive day too. A couple of, at least two singles at least. Well, there's an RBI single back in the first inning. Yeah, he got that whole thing going early on in this uh, baseball game.
Two and two here for Bobby Witt. to Wensley, that'll bring up Morrison again. Trojans coming in at three and O, oh, as one might expect with the way the lineup has produced today. Oh, definitely so. This Morrison kid, batting third, big, strong kid. You can tell he's a baseball player. Did you say he played football too? He does. Well, you can tell. The Trojans have not won by less than 10 runs in their first three matchups of the season. 11 to one over the Barnstable Raiders. 15 to four over the Plymouth South Panthers and 10 to nothing over the Framingham Flyers. Yeah, this is definitely a hitting team so far early on in this season. They're seeing the ball very well at the plate. And a couple big battles coming up for the Trojans as they will host Lincoln Sudbury on Wednesday afternoon and then travel to Mansfield to face the Hornets next Monday. Witt needs to put this over the plate. A 2-2 from Bobby Witt. High pop-up. Deep to left field, drifting back is Buker still drifting back. It's over his head, it one hops the warning track again. Two runs gonna score easy for BR here and it's a two RBI double. For Kim Morrison. Yeah, nice, nice, nice hit right there, but it looks like the left fielder had trouble deciding where, where that yeah, was gonna. Yeah, got a bad jump and then yeah. misread it. I know the sun's still in his eyes, but that was, um, I, I thought that should have been, he should have got under that and caught the ball. It, it was a high, high fly, and he just couldn't find himself out there in left field and let the ball get over his head. Shot out to deep center field. That's gonna get over the head again of the boxer outfielder. Another run scores, and it's another RBI double. This time, Owen King doing the hard work. Yeah, the boxes, excuse me, the um, Bridgewater Rangham Trojans are teeing off on, bo on the boxes pitchers this afternoon. They don't seem to have an answer for these hot bats of Bridgewater Rayham. Hard grounder is short. That might have gotten the runner. Not called. We referenced that rule earlier, Miles. Yes, we did. I'm um, said, didn't hit him. Tough break there for the boxes. That puts runners on the corners here. One in from Witt. Now to Luke Barry as we get to that dangerous part of the Trojan order. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who goes follow. Of course, we're talking about the 
Six, seven, eight, nine batters. Yeah, yeah, they've been dangerous all day. Looks like we will have a pinch hitter on deck. Austin Major is in the on deck circle. Shout out to deep right field this time. And not even gonna make an attempt at the catch. That two hops the wall. Another two Trojan runs are gonna score. And it's another two run double. This time, Luke Barry again. Have a day, young man. Yes, indeed. He tagged that one. Got all the bat on it. Again, in the gap. Over the head of the right fielder. These bats are on fire for the Trojans. So here comes Austin Major, batting in place of Bobby Quill, the left fielder. Makes it 15 to one miles this week. Talked about this. Wow. The Trojan lineup is just tearing through opponents to start the season. Yeah, they're really ripping the cover off the ball here this afternoon. Couple of two RBI doubles, high hop handled by Perez, long throw in time for the out. That will retire the side, not a moment too soon. The boxers are going to need Five runs if they want to see the sixth inning here today. Will they do it in the bottom of the fifth? Stay tuned. We'll find out. You're watching MIAA Baseball on BCA and BTV. Whole host of defensive changes for the Trojans. I'll tell you the two most important ones. The new pitcher is Tony Palladino. The new catcher is Ben DeFilippo. The Trojans up big here, 15 to one, top of the fifth inning. The boxers will send up number four, Tyler Erickson. 
the pinch hitter. They need to get a couple runs across in short order. Jared Finn standing on deck. He will pinch hit as well. Check swing called strike to Erickson. Hawks just need five to extend this to the sixth inning. Ball one skipper across. One from Paladino, good for strike two. Nice pitch there by Paladino. One, two, oh. half swing and a miss. That out fooled number him. one. That fooled him, I don't know how it fooled him. That was going outside from the get-go. Just wasn't concentrating up there at the plate. That should have been a... Uh, Check swing, ball. Tried to hold up and by the time he stopped the bat, it was already across home plate. Jared Finn, another pinch hitter. Batting in place of Brett Keane, the right fielder. Jackson O'Brien. Standing on deck. Foul tip into the mitt. Own one. Paladino looking to make quick work of what could be the last inning. Yeah, he had a little heat on that last pitch. Drop a foul rather on deck is uh, number six, Cooper Card, will be the third pinch hitter of the inning for the Brockton Boxers. Out from Paladino, one and two. And evens now, two balls, two strikes. Card will bat for Jackson O'Brien. Whoa. Ball three gets away from Paladino, full count. He definitely got away from him on that pitch. Slipped right out of his hands. Payoff pitch from Tony Paladino. Upstairs, ball four. It's a one out walk. Jared Finn and now Cooper Card steps in. <laughs> Card batting in place of Armani LaRusso, Nick Genitasio waiting on deck. One on one out for the boxers. Backs out of ball one up and in. You might some, see some of these Brockton hitters here. Hold off on the swing and see if they can maybe get a few guys on on walks. Well, two comes in low and inside. That will send Filippo out to talk to Palladino. Yes, that's a good move right there by the catcher. You don't want to see things get out of hand here. I'm sure they want to get these outs, jump back on the bus and head back to Bridgewater Ram. The 
2 0 from Palladino. Ball three inside. So Card will be looking all the way here. Yeah. Holds and it's Ooh. strike one just over the inside corner. Just painted that inside corner. Just painted it. Makes it three and one. That'll be ball four inside. Back to back walks for the boxers. And now they'll send up Genitasio in the three spot. Boxer hitter needs to send one of these guys home. That hit him. So the bases are drunk for Zeke and Shostagy. Big Zeke. Boxer cleanup hitter, and that will send out Coach Connolly. You see Got him, him on the inside of the forearm. Yep. And he's okay. Big spot for Shostagy. Big chance to shine right here, big guy. The sacks are packed. For the boxer cleanup hitter. Erickson. Brother Finn on third, Card on second, Genitasio on first. First pitch from Palladino to Enchostegui will send the runners. And the boxers have one run across on the wild pitch. Yeah. Brockton fans have something to cheer about. You can see the wild pitch right here. To the outside. The 1 0, big swing and a miss. See, I think he could have held up on that one. That looks high and outside. I consider walking the boxer cleanup hitter with first base open here. High pop up left field. Coming on in. Making the catch full outstretch, but the runner from third tags up and Card will slide in safely. It's 15 to three. Down to their last out now, however, are the Brockton Boxers. It will be in place of Brady Witt. First pitch to Glenuski. Upstairs ball one. Tasio on second. He is the only boxer base runner at the moment. Played two runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two away. One and one now to Glenuski. Good pitch right there. Glenuski, the only freshman on the boxer roster. So ball two outside. In fact, there's only two underclassmen. Genitasio would be the other one. He's a sophomore. Three and one. Now the count to Aaron Kluniewski. Pitch from
from Palladino. Ooh. Ball tipped into the mitt, full count. Right, good pitch right down the middle with a little heat. Brockton down to their last strike here. And that is how the game is gonna end. Strike three called over the inside corner. The boxers mount a little comeback at the end, Miles, but they fall 15 to three to their Southeast Conference rival, the Bridgewater Raymond Trojans. Yeah, Brockton walked into a, um, a windstorm right here. This Brockton, right, excuse me, this Bridgewater Raymond team's a real deal. I could just tell by their hitting is great, their pitching is good. Um, they've got the whole package, it looks like, at early on in this season, but um, there wasn't much Brockton could do with this hot hitting um, Trojan team. Luke Barry is gonna be my player of the game. He had that three RBI double to really seal this game. His last at bat reached base all five times to the dish in the sixth spot in the Trojan lineup, Miles, even hitting throughout. Yeah, he's, he's the real deal. I mean, he does it all. He can pitch. I mean, excuse me, he can hit, he can field. Um, he's just a complete ball player and um, you know, the Trojans um, look to um, have a pretty good season so far. I mean, Brockton's a good team. They came in here 2-0. And, oh. and um, Bridgewater came in on their turf and uh, took care of business right away. Boxers fall to 2-1. The Trojans improved to 4-0 and oh with a big battle coming against Lincoln Sudbury. We want to thank you for watching this joint production of Brockton Community Access Bridgewater Television. On behalf of everyone here at BCA and BTV, our producer, Mary Evers, Jeff Fowler, Mike the Postman Simmons. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. We'll see you next game.